There we go. That should be better now. Sorry about that. I forgot to unmute. Ah, glorious. All right. So, we're going to be doing AP Bio this way. And with any luck, we'll be back in the classroom before your AP test. But I want you guys to know the College Board has already started going into and publishing that they're looking into doing AP testing at home. So there is the possibility if our closure lasts longer that uh, we may not see each other until this whole thing's over. So with that said, uh, today's going to be pretty short nothing too major we're actually just going to be practicing some more chi-square not chi-square hardy weinberg chi-squares tomorrow um and making sure that everybody is up to date with the math for it have you guys found everything on schoology I like watching my eyes move around. It's very entertaining. All right, cool. So we'll have that. I actually just shared the slideshow for tomorrow with you guys. Hopefully you got it. Um, if not, I found a copy, I think, and I uploaded it. If it doesn't work, we'll move on from there. But for today, we're really just going to be taking a look at what is up over here. There we go. And that is the practice question file. It's pretty straightforward. I've included an answer sheet to go along with it, so you can check all of your answers in order to make sure that you're actually getting it done right. But before we just sort of call it good, I want to actually try a couple of these with you guys. So take a moment, grab something to write on, to write with, Switch your phones over into a calculator mode if you can. God forbid if you're watching me on those things. The screen's just not large enough for my amount of awesome. Alright, so. I know that you guys are probably still clicking through it in order to open things up and whatnot. But I'm just going to start reading. Feel free to catch up as soon as you can. So, question number one wants to know the frequency of two alleles in a gene pool. And it tells you that capital A is 0 0.19 and little a is 0 0.81. It wants you to assume that the population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium because of course it does. Because if it doesn't, this entire equation is absolutely worthless. Just like it actually is. And anyway, just as a warm-up, it wants you to calculate the percentage of the heterozygous individuals in the population and then calculate the percentage of the homozygous, recessive individuals in the population. Now, hopefully, this doesn't sound like anything overly challenging. They're giving us both of our starting values. They're giving us our p-value and our q-value. The p-value is that 0.19 they tell us that's the dominant capital A, so we've got our P. Our Q value, little a, the recessive, 0 0.81. So all you have to do is then plug them into the equation for the heterozygous population, 2PQ. And then for the homozygous recessives, Q squared. Oh, I touched my face. Oh, no. The virus. So, once again, you may still be working on it, but otherwise I'm just sitting here with dead air and that don't feel right. So, I went through and calculated out our starting points for these. Now it's important to note the answer they want in percentage. So you've got to make sure that you can change it from our uh, frequency into the actual percentage values. Does everything make sense so far? Oh, 
Okay. I mean, we've done Hardy Weinberg before, so hopefully it should be pretty straightforward. The next question I want you guys to look at is number four. Now, number four, I want you guys to have a chance to work on because this is very, very similar to the way that the AP exam tends to word these questions and how they like to set them up. So number four says, in human, the RH factor genetic information is inherited from our parents, but it is inherited independent of the ABO blood type alleles. In humans, RH plus individuals have the RH antigen on their red blood cells, while RH negative individuals do not. There are two different alleles for the RH factor known as RH plus and then the recessive little r, little h. Assume that a dominant gene, capital RH, produces the RH plus phenotype, and that the recessive allele, little r, little h, produces the RH negative phenotype. Okay, so, huge amount of text there. Now, first thing, is the ABO blood type allele part important? No question has nothing to do with it. It's just there to confuse you. All of this middle part about RH plus individuals having the RH antigen on their red blood cells, is that important to the question? No, it's just garbage again. It's just there to try to muck things up and make it that much harder for you guys to reach the answer. Now what they really want to know is just going to be the RH plus and the recessive little r, little h, the, that allele, whether you're getting the dominant or the recessive. So they say, in a population that is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, 160 out of 200 individuals are RH+. Plus. Then they want you to calculate the frequency of both alleles. So where do you start? Remember, they've given us the information that 160 out of 200 are RH+. Plus. Is that a number that we can actually use? Mm, that's the trick. See, they're trying to catch you. They want you to think that that's the p-squared value because then people will immediately start to calculate the equation based on that. But remember, whenever we're talking about the dominant allele in a population, the frequency that we're seeing it in individuals, that means it's going to include both our homozygous dominant and our heterozygous. Yes, Emily. Welcome, Emily. Hello. Good afternoon. Yes, what we want to do is we want to take the 160, subtract it from the 200, just like Matt's doing, and that's going to give us our value of 40. That's the number of individuals that show the recessive phenotype. That's our Q square. So now take 40, divide it by the total number of the population, which is 200, And you should get, oh, uh, let's see, this. 40 divided by 200 is our 0.2. That's equal to our Q squared. So since we now have our Q squared, what we have to do is we have to get our Q value. So we'll take the square root of 0.2. And we should end up with a value something like this. Once you try and um, round it, come out somewhere right around 0.45 for our Q. Now that we have our Q, we can figure out our P value because 1 minus 0.45 equals 0.55 for our P. Now, if we take a look at the question, 
The question says they only want you to calculate the frequency of both alleles. So as soon as you've gotten to this point, you're done. You don't need to go any further with it. But that one starts off a little bit trickier, right? Like instead of just kind of casually sitting there and giving you the numbers, you actually need to derive it a little bit. All right, the next one I want to look at is number seven. Number seven is at the start of the second page. Both questions seven and eight have to deal with the same setup, and that is that two Siamese and three Persian cats survive a shipwreck and are carried on driftwood to a previously uninhabited tropical island. All five cats have normal ears, but one carries the recessive allele, little f, and it should be four folded ears. And then it tells you his genotype, just to clear it up, is capital F, little f. So number seven says, calculate the frequency of the alleles, capital F and little f, in the cat population on this island. Yes, the long equation, the p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1, is always when we're looking at full individuals. When we're looking at just the alleles, then we're looking at the p plus q equals 1. So in this case, we got five cats. One of them is heterozygous. How do we figure out the frequency of the alleles? Well, it's first worth noting, and if you're already here, I apologize, because I'm going to take a few minutes. I know, right? I'm erasing it with toilet paper. What sort of a monster am I? Alright, so, remember, we got us five different cats. Uh, yeah. There we go. That's my cat. That's a tail. It's not a good tail, but it's a tail. Alright, now in each cat... Uh, I'll give it a little mouth. There we go. Now in each cat, remember we have how many alleles for every trait? As far as I know, it's just the three of you, which is actually pretty good. You should have seen the percentage of my normal bio class at 11. So each cat, remember, has got two alleles for each trait, which means that most of those cats are capital F, capital F for normal pointed ears. But there's one of them, just one, that's heterozygous, capital F, little f. So now, hello, Erica, welcome. So now what we want to do is we want to figure out how many total alleles do we have in this entire gene pool. Eight people. Yeah, some of them, I don't know who they are, never identified, didn't talk, and we're here for my bio one at 11. So, who knows? Maybe I'm just attracting a crowd. I am pretty spectacular and beautiful. All right, but to the point of our question, we got grand total of five cats, right? Five cats with two alleles apiece. Means that we have 10 total alleles. If we got 10 total alleles, <laughs> uh, depends what you're better at. Put me in frickin' Fortnite against them and it's it's not going to be pretty. No, oh, Jack, by all means, man. So, 10 total alleles. We know one cat 
is capital F little f, which means that 1 out of 10 is little f, and the other 9 out of 10 are big F. So right there, we have our frequencies. Our P, which remember, your P value is always for the dominant, is going to be 0.9, and our Q value for the recessive will be 0.1. Uh, how's that? All right, so that part, that part helps us out with the first. Number seven wanted us to calculate the frequencies of capital F and little f in the cat population on the island. Boom, did it. Number eight, if you assume Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and even they then say admittedly very improbable, calculate the number of cats you would expect to have folded ears when the island population reaches 20,000. All right. Well, first things first. Don't worry, Mikey. I'll bring it back. We're not looking at five cats anymore. And the only thing that's really going to be important to us are these values. Because if it's in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, these values aren't going to change. No mutation, no immigration, no emigration, etc., etc., etc. So now, what we need to do is now we need to figure out how many of them would have folded ears. Well, which one of our equations would be talking about folded ears? We've already identified that that folded ear thing is the recessive allele, which means that we'd be looking for the Q squared. So, we take our point 1, we're going to want to square it, and I believe that ends up being, let me check my math, but I believe it's point zero 0.01. Yep. So, if we're expecting 0.01% of the population, a frequency of 1%, to have folded ears, then what we need to do is now multiply this by the uh, 20,000 that we had on the island. Let me shift this. And you should get a value of about 200 poorly drawn zeros, I mean, sorry, 200 cats. All right, hopefully this is stuff's making sense and kind of jogging your memory. We're going to jump down to number 10. Now, I want you guys to do number 9, too. So once we're done here, try number 9 then double check online the answer key is included in the same folder that today's lesson was in so you can double check it but let's move on to number 10 because number 10 is going to be very interesting and it's going to introduce us into what we're going to be working with tomorrow we're going to need that board right back so i'm just going to Ah, yeah, whatever. I'll stay over here. We'll leave the entire other side of the screen over in this area as a magical nebulous thing. Why can't you focus, camera? Do you not have enough of a subject? Oh, great. This is just what I want. Focus on hand. Okay, there we go. All right, so number 10 is a rough one. So I'll read it out, and then I'll help you guys set it up, and then we'll see what you get. So in Caucasian humans, hair straightness or curliness is thought to be governed by a single pair of alleles showing partial dominance. Individuals with straight hair 
are homozygous for the capital I S allele, while those with curly hair are homozygous for the capital I C allele. Individuals with wavy hair are heterozygous. One capital I S, one capital I C. In a population of a thousand individuals, two hundred and forty five were found to have straight hair. 393 had curly hair, and 362 had wavy hair. All right, so there's our setup. It wants you to start by calculating the allele frequencies of the capital IS and the capital IC alleles. Now, this one's a tricky one because they're not giving you one or the other that's just straight up uh, dominant or recessive they're just not doing it so instead we can't rely on that luckily they've given us all the numbers for all the different groups in this uh, study in this question so instead what we're going to do is we're going to switch over and we're going to use those numbers now the best way to do this arguably is to take a look at them and remember I'm touching my face oh no well that's it now I'm infected right so remember, the goal here is in order to find these allele frequencies. And it seems like our best bet is to go back to those population numbers. And from those, try to figure out the total, um, the total gene pool that we're looking at. So in this case, they say that there are 245 with straight hair. Let me make sure that that's in frame. Good. All right, 245 of them had straight hair. Now, straight hair was governed by our capital IS, capital IS combo. Then, we had 362 with wavy hair. Now, wavy hair is capital IS, capital IC. And then our last one is our curly hair, and we had 393, and curly hair was our homozygous capital IC, capital IC. So with this, in the total gene pool, how many alleles are we going to find of capital I, S? I'm actually going to give you guys a minute. I'm going to keep talking because otherwise it feels really weird just for dead air. But you guys get the picture. I want you to actually calculate this out or try to figure it out. Try to come up with a number for it. All of your hints are on the board. Okay, the kind of difficulty here is, yeah, we can kind of consider this to be the P. Technically, there is no dominant, there is no recessive in this scenario. But you could try to do it that way. Now, I don't want to ruin what people are working on, but at the same point, I also don't want to sit here for like five minutes just staring at a webcam. So, let me start a little bit of guidance, and if it changes what you're doing, so be it. Now, when we take a look at these numbers, the question is, how many alleles are we getting of each type? So, we're going to have our IS group and our IC group. Now, obviously, we're getting 245 from our straight hair people. We're going to get 362 
from our wavy haired people. But you can absolutely. If you get numbers, feel free to uh, shout them out right in chat. But there's something to keep in mind. Because if you just add these two together, you're not taking into account that this one actually has two copies of capital IS. Which means that we need to add a second set of 245. 0.42, ooh, pretty darn good. You're pretty close. Yeah. No. Now, if we total this up, then we should have right in the neighborhood of 852. Now, for our ICs, we're obviously going to get our 362 here. And then we're going to get our 393 from our curly-haired folk. Right. Good, Emily. But remember, once again, we're getting two copies of each allele here, so then we need to add another 393, which means that our total value here should come out We added them twice because we're looking for how often the allele is appearing in the total gene pool. And the total gene pool needs to take into account the fact that these individuals are giving two copies. These ones are giving two of their respective alleles, and our heterozygous are only giving their number once. So 362 only appears once in each set, but the 393 is appearing twice because each one is donating two copies. All right, so once you have these, now we can figure out the frequencies in the total gene pool. Now, it said there were 1,000 individuals, which means that there's 2,000 total genes. You can figure that out by adding these two numbers together. So then it's just 852 divided by 2,000. And... 1,148 divided by 2,000. And what we should get, if everything works out, you know, reasonably well, is once rounded, we should get a value here for our capital IS of 0.43 and a value for our capital IC of 0.57. There we go. Just ah, tilt over and up. All right. So our goal, when I see you guys tomorrow, because we've been going for 34 minutes already. This has actually been a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Our goal tomorrow is we're going to take these values that we calculated here and we're going to compare them to what we're actually seeing in a population. And part B of that worksheet wants you guys to uh, kind of identify this with what they call a chi-square goodness of fit test. I kid you not, that is the legitimate 100% term for this. It is referred to as a goodness of fit test. And if that sounds dumb to you, I think there's got to be a better uh, a better word for it. But let's see. There we go. But that'll be our goal tomorrow. For now, finish up the other questions. Make sure that you're practiced with it because a lot of the chi-square tests have to do with the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium questions. So you got to be good with one before we move into the other one. Do you guys have any questions for me today? Don't worry about submitting it. I don't need you guys to actually turn it into me. I just want you to do it, check the answer key, and see are you on point. All right. In which case, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. No problem. I'll be doing this every day. Check your email to make sure that the slideshow is shared with you. 
And otherwise, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.